Hi. This video covers uh, removing this, this type of seal here with a flat face on. Uh, we're no type of a, a seal removal tool, standard one in any way. We'll take it out. Uh, this came out of a Daewoo that I did this winter, and the seal split. And this was just a continuous steady stream of oil running out of there. So um, I'll show you some techniques in how to remove a seal like this, of which I did a couple of them this winter and then get you back on the road again. So uh, thanks for taking a look at this video. We're going to be drilling through this seal and what I have here is an automatic punch just so I can get the hole started and it's going to go right through. Just put it right in the middle at a convenient spot. It's going to do two things, leave a little mark on there for you for your, screw, for your drill bit. I hit it a couple, three times. This type of bit doesn't wander, you don't need a hammer. That's just the handiness of it. So if you don't have one of those though, you're gonna have to get in there, you know, and hold it and use a hammer. Okay, I have a good sharp drill bit in here. It's a small one. It's gotta be maybe on the order of three thirty seconds. And I I sharpened it up. we're in. And starting with a small screw. This seal, as you know, is not very thick, so you don't need to go down there too deep. And then with a pry tool. Being careful here because you got to realize this is a fairly light grade, light gauge uh, cover on here. These seals have a tendency to be in there pretty good. Take some prying. I decided to go in there with a little bit bigger sheet metal screw so I wasn't really getting this one's longer too so that I can get a little bit better mechanical advantage. It's important like I said to get this in the center of the seal because you do not want to scratch up or score up the sides of the bore in here. So you turn it in, turn the screw in but not so far in that it actually you know, hits the back side. Now wear safety glasses when you're doing this. If this thing let loose, guess where it's likely could likely hit. So just keep prying on it until it until it gives away. And this may take a little time. The seals are intended to fit in there very, very close. And there it is. Not too bad. Came out of there in pretty good, pretty good fashion. You want to make sure before you mount this new seal that there isn't any kind of problem with the uh, surfaces, the contact surfaces inside here, the bore basically, and the uh, and the shaft, crankshaft. So I'm running a Q-tip around here just to make sure I don't feel any. Any ca anything catching on here that could catch on the seal. Because tauling seals can be tricky. If you're not careful and they miss seat, you'll ruin them very quickly. You'll be out doing this job again. So first of all, I'm cleaning it good. And then I'm going to put got some grease here on the contact surfaces, both the inner on the crankshaft and on the bore as well. And I'm going to do the same thing on the seal. We don't want the seal rolling as it goes in. I've had that happen. And wind up doing it again. So make sure you've got some good lubricant when that seal seats that it doesn't roll on you. I have.
have all contact surfaces of this seal lubed up. So you have to be careful that you don't roll the seal as you put it in. So there, it's fitted already around the inner ring, around the, around the crankshaft part of the bore. So now all we have to do is drive it in there evenly. And what I'm going to use is this piece of PVC and the crank bolt. So first on goes the PVC. This is two inches in diameter. And then I have a large washer It's going on top of that. And then the crank bolt. The crank bolt has the original bushing on it. I discovered you need for the in order to properly to seat this all the way. You do it without it with my three millimeter or three centimeter piece of PVC it won't be deep enough to pre to uh, seat it all the way. I have to want to be careful to make sure this pipe is uh, centered. It's already been already made sure that the pipe is completely um, squared up too, so it doesn't have a high edge or a low edge that would cause trouble. Okay, I'm turning it in. And I like to check this along the way to make sure. And it's going on evenly and smoothly, so I do this in stages. Don't rush this. And I found from some bitter past experience that rushing it is going to uh, cause you to make mistakes. Take the extra time to get this in here right. You might be doing it again. You want the lip even on the inside. You don't want it catching or rolling. You check it along the way that it's going in evenly and it's not cocked going in at an angle on one side deeper on one side than the other and if all looks good then just finish it off put it in the rest of the way putting the finishing touches on now I had to seal uh, the, the setting tool in and out a couple of times just to make sure it's going in even very important Okay, when I won't go in any further, you don't want to force it. It's in there. So just remove your kit, inspect it, and we should be ready for reassembly. It's in there, right? It should be even. Especially check the inner lip here. The outer is not going to have a problem, it's just a press fit basically into the uh, bore of the engine. But the inner one here, if you're going to have a problem, it's going to be there. If the edge isn't smooth, if there's a part that appears to be caught, to be raised, that's a real potential problem. You may have rolled it, could be a problem in there. This one now looks perfect. I'm going to uh, call it good.